Hey guys watching us on BTN TV. I'm very sure that you also know my identity. But in simple terms, my name is Teacher Fred from Wisdom Center, Puchesela District in Kalumuna. Uh, I'm handling mathematics as usual, just like I explained to you earlier, or I introduced myself earlier in the first lessons that we have been handling. So today we are still proceeding with our topic, that is Unit 6, which says percentages, ratios, proportions, and mixtures. Uh, previously, we were looking at how we could, uh, how we could change percentages into decimals, we changing decimals into percentages, changing fractions into percentages, changing percentages into fractions, and so on. So today I want us to look at our lesson for today, which says comparing quantities as percentage. We want to see or we want to compare quantities of things as a percentage. Let's look at the first example. What does it say? When we look at our first example, it says Mugabo went to Kigali and about 500 grams of salt at 200 francs. Express the amount of salt he bought as a percentage of one kilogram. Let's look at the question. When you look at the question very well, we need now to identify these two main uh, quantities. We have, they have talked about 500 grams. At the same time, they have talked about one kilogram. When you come to the last question, which says, express the amount of salt he bought as a percentage. There is nowhere the question is demanding you to use this 200 francs. They only need us to express this amount he bought only as a percentage of one kilogram. And when we come to this, we have two different types, uh, we have two different types of units. We have got grams, at the same time, we have got kilograms. What does it mean? It means we have to change or we have to convert or we have to express all the units into a uniform unit before taking a step. Therefore, we shall come here and say we have one kilogram. We are now going to change one kilogram into grams because up here when you look at this, they have already given us grams. They express their quantity in grams. We, we did not buy the whole kilogram, but we bought just 500 grams. So we shall have one kilogram, which will be converted, which will be converted into kilograms. Just like we looked at conversion of units concerning measurement of volume and length last year in P5. This same round, let's just go direct on mass. By saying, converting our kilograms into grams, we shall just come and withdraw a very simple table here aside. Don't, con don't draw it there. Just come aside and I say, King Henry's daughter Grace drank cold milk. Okay, this grace here is standing for grams. So I'll come here and add, uh, I'll add there G, I'll add there G, I'll add there G. I don't add G on G. I'll come here and add A, G, I'll come here and add G, I'll come here and add G. Okay, whereby when I have get G, simply it means kilogram. Now, we are going to change our kilograms into grams. I will come where there is a unit for kilograms, which is this one. So, after drawing my simple table, the way it is, I will underline here. I come and write the units that we want to change. 
whereby here we are given only one kilogram. So I'm going to change this one kilogram into grams. I'll come where there is a kilogram, I'll say one. I'll write zeros until I reach grams. After reaching grams, I shouldn't continue this side because grams is already here. Okay? Then, what does such mean? It means one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. One kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So I'll come here, then I say, on my actual work, that is our side work, I'll say, one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. We have now expressed one kilogram into grams. Why did we express one kilogram into grams? Because this boy or this man did not buy a full kilo. He bought just grams. That was 500 grams, not yet a full kilo gram. So we shall have to convert that. After converting that, when you are expressing quantity as percentages, we shall always divide and multiply. We divided the quantity and we multiply. Okay? Whereby, when in this case, we shall have what, what did this man or this boy buy? He bought salt, but how many grams? 500 grams. I'll come here and I'll say, my 500 grams divide by, it was five, let's look at the statement. Mugabe went to Gigali and bought 500 grams of salt at 200. Then at the same time, they said, express the amount of salt he bought as a percentage of one kilogram, of one kilogram. Now, we shall get what he bought, we say, out of what was expected. So it will be 500 grams out of one kilogram. And we know very well that our one kilogram is equivalent to 1,000 grams. So this will give us 500 grams out of 1,000 grams. Remember, we are changing to percentages. So if we are changing to percentages, what is the next step? We are going to get the fraction we have already formed. We multiply by 100% because we are changing the to, or we are expressing the quantity that this man bought to grams, okay? Uh, no, 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 to percentage. So I'll say, I will say 500 grams out of 1,000 grams times 100 percent. We are expressing everything into percentage. That's why we're multiplying by 100 percent. After there, I will say 500 grams out of 1,000 grams times 100 grams. I mean 100 percent. Grams and grams will go away, will disappear. Then I will say, this zero will cancel out to this zero. This zero will cancel out to this zero. What am I remaining with? I'm remaining with 10 as a denominator. Up here I have 500. I'll also get this zero, I'll cross it out with this zero. Okay? After there, we shall have 50 is what we are remaining with. Don't ask where did, G, where did G go? Where did the grams disappear from? The units, we cancelled them from here. Grams, grams. Grams divided by grams, we cancel them out. Okay? So from there, we are remaining with 50 times 1% divided by 1, which will give us 50 percent out of one. Therefore, I will summarize by saying, therefore, 500 grams is equivalent to 50 percent.
is equivalent to 50%. But put this in consideration. If they had given us two, we would not say out of 1,000. If they said express, uh, express the amount of salt he bought as a percentage of 5 kilograms, we could not say out of 1,000. It would be out of 5,000. If it was 5 kilograms. If they talked of 10 kilograms, then it means it would be out of 10,000 grams. But as for now, we consider what they have given us. That was 1 kilogram. That will be the end of this example. After that, I will get my ruler and underline my work. As I underline my work, as I underline my work, whoever will be interested, whoever will be interested in, uh, in accessing this work in his either computer, either the phone, you can also just straight away visit BTN TV journals. You can check on their YouTube. You can check on their Instagram. You can check on their Twitter. You can check on their Facebook accounts. You'll find all the information that you need concerning or relating to the lesson that I'm delivering. In case of any inquiry about what I've done, I refer you to this. You can call and find out what, uh, more about what we have got today or learned today. Anything related to this, please, I refer you here. I refer you to BTN TV journals, just like I've told you. And in addition to that, you can also visit Wisdom Center website, uh, Facebook, and their WhatsApp group, their parents' WhatsApp group. Let's look at example two. Let's look at example two. As we look at example two, my advice to my candidates outside there, we know the situation is really alarming, but as it is alarming, as it is still alarming, as it is still going on, as we are praying, as the government is also involving to help us to fight all this battle to make sure that we are free out of this, out of these hard conditions. Please stay home as you are revising. Don't just stay. Stay as you are revising as we pray for each other. So example two says. Example two says, out of uh, 20 pupils, 20 pupils out of, out of 34 pupils, Twenty pupils out of thirty-four pupils at wisdom at wisdom sender at wisdom sender nursery and primary primary school. 20 pupils out of 34 pupils at Wisdom Saint and also under primary school scored, scored five aggregates. Scored five aggregates. Scored five aggregates. Scored five aggregates. Squad five aggregates in there in there first in their first test and 
the rest and the rest squared and the rest squared six aggregates and the rest squared six aggregates express 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 the number the number of pupils who scored who scored five and six five and six aggregates and a six aggregates as a percentage as a percentage as a percentage of the class ah so let's look at that when we look at example 2 what is it saying it is saying uh, out of it is saying 20 pupils out of 34 pupils at Wisdom Center, nursery and primary school scored five aggregates in their first test. And the rest scored six aggregates. And the rest scored six aggregates. Express the number of pupils who scored five aggregates, five and six aggregates as a percentage of the class. Right, let's now look at this. As they want us to express this number of pupils as a percentage, we have to put this in consideration. Check the units. Uh, when you look at this, our units here, they are talking about people. So with the units of people, we don't, uh, we don't change people. There is no way we shall say, here now we bring in kilograms like the way we brought at first. Here we shall look at the number of pupils which are in the whole school, I mean in the whole class. At the same time, we look at the pupils who also scored 25 uh, aggregates. And those were 20 kids, okay? So from there, we shall come and say, we shall come and say, as we look for the solution, we shall look at this. They have said five aggregates. We want to look at kids who scored five aggregates. How many were they? We identify them. They were, they say, 20 pupils out of 34, meaning that they were 20. So you first identify the number of pupils who scored the five aggregates. They were 20 pupils. They were 20 pupils. After identifying them, what is the next step? The next step, we have also to identify the number of learners who scored six aggregates. The number of learners who scored six aggregates. How do we find them? Because when you look in the question, you don't see where they say it's, uh, 10 or 20 or 30 scored six aggregates. They only told us the number of pupils who scored to, uh, five percent, I mean five aggregates, and those were 20 kids. But remember, the whole class had 34 pupils. So if there were 34 pupils, it means we shall get the number of kids, that is 34, then we subtract the number of pupils who scored five. Because after those who scored the five, they say the rest, meaning the remaining number of kids scored the six. None of those kids went beyond six. So if they scored the six, we shall say uh, 34 minus 20. Why are we subtracting 20? Uh, the whole class, they were 34. Out of 34, 20 scored the five. 
Meaning that the rest is squad six. And how many were they? They were 14. When you get 34 minus 20, we shall have 14. So we shall say 14 pupils squared six aggregates. Six aggregates. So let's express five percent. Those ones who got five aggregates, how many are they? And we express that number as a percentage. Okay. We shall say the ones who got five, they were five. Uh, those ones who got, who got five aggregates, five aggregates, they were 20. But out of how many? Out of 34. Out of 34. That was the number of pupils in the whole class. They were 34. After there, since we are changing to Percentage, we shall multiply everything by 100%. By 100%. By 100%. Thereafter, we shall say 20 times 100. It will give us 2,000 out of 34 out of 34. And all this, we shall say it is under percentage. But before you come there, before you multiply out everything like this, the number may become too heavy for you to divide. When you make it a very big number like this, the best advice I give you is, before you multiply out, first reduce if these numbers can be reduced. So let's first reduce before we come to this step. I will say, 34 is an even number, 20 is an even number, 100 is an even number. Let's divide these numbers here. We shall say 34 divided by 2, it will give us 17. Then we say 20 divided by 2, it will give us 10. Then from there, we shall say 10 times 100, it will give us 1,000 out of 17. And all this will be in a percentage. All that will be in percentage. Let me clean here as we proceed with our number. It will be 1,000 out of 17. So we want to see how can we divide that 1,000 out of 17. Because 1,000 is, uh, is an improper fraction and we cannot leave the answer in an improper fraction. We shall have to divide it by saying, we can use here long division. I will say we have 1,000 but we are dividing it by 17. Every digit that is inside this long division sign is supposed to be divided by the number which is outside. So we shall say one divided by 17, which will give us zero. That zero will be written here. Then I will say zero times 17 which will give us zero. Then from there, we shall have to subtract. One take away zero, we shall have one. We come to the next step. We shall bring down zero here. We shall bring down zero. When we bring down zero, we shall make uh, 10. After making 10, we shall say 10 Divide by 17, which will give us 0. Then we say 0 times 17, which will give us 0. Then we subtract. 0 take away 0, 0. 1 take away 0, 1. Still we have 10. We are going to bring up uh, down another number. 
that is zero. When we bring this zero, we shall make 100. Let's ask ourselves, how many groups of 100 are how many groups of 17 are in 100? How many groups of 17 are in 100? Go for side work. Don't write it somewhere here. Just come on your own paper somewhere. Just call it side work. Call it side work. So your side work will say, I have 100. How many groups of 17 are in 100? I will say 17, 17, uh-huh. When we add this, 7 plus 7, 14. 7 plus 7, 14, one here. 1 plus 1 plus 1. Those are two groups. Two groups gives us 34. Let's add more two groups. More two groups will also be 34, meaning that these are now four groups. Okay? So when we get 4 plus 4, it will give us 8. 3 plus 3, it will give us 6. Still, it is less than 100, because our target is to reach 100, or the number which is approximately 100. So let's add more two groups. More two groups is 34. So we shall add more two groups and we say uh, 8 plus 4, it will give us 12, 1 here. Okay? Which will give us 7. 7 plus 3, 10. You'll find out that this is beyond. So if you say 6 times, 6 groups goes beyond 100. Meaning that we cannot go, we cannot reach 6 times. Let's try 5 times. Five times, it means if these are four times, we shall add more one group. If we add more one group, what does it give us? When you get this plus this, we shall have 15. Eight plus seven, it will give us 15. 15, we shall add here one. One plus six, seven, plus one, eight. So we shall have eight and five. But how many groups are those? They are five. So if they are five, I'll come here and say, I'll come here and say, they are five groups. After identifying that there are five groups, I will say five times 17. Five times 17, which will give us 85. After getting 85, we have to subtract. We shall have to subtract. We shall have to subtract. We shall say, zero take away five, which is impossible. We shall come and borrow here. From 10, we leave nine. We make 10. 10 take away five, we shall have five. Here we have nine. Nine take away eight, we shall have one. We borrowed this zero, and we borrowed this one, so it means here we have zero, meaning that we have 15. After remaining with 15, what is the next step? After remaining with the 15, I will come and bring down also zero. We shall come and bring down zero. When we bring down zero, we shall have 150. 150. How many groups? How many groups of 17 can go into 150? Let's come at our side work and we find out what we have to do. We said 17 plus 17 is 34. These are two groups. And when we add more two groups, it means when we get 34 plus 34, that one gives us four groups. And that will give us 68. Those are four groups. Let's add another two groups. More two groups. More two groups would be 32. I mean 34. More two groups would be 34. When we add this, we shall have here two. We shall add here one. 1 plus 6, 7, 7 plus 3, that will be 10. I don't know whether I'm too speedy for some people to understand what I'm saying, specifically you candidates who are watching us. I said 8 plus 4, that's 12. 12, we shall write 2, we regroup 1. 1 plus 6, that is 7. 7 plus 3, that is 10. And how many groups are these? Remember this were 4. Then we have added more to, it means these are six groups. Six groups gives us 102. But what is our target? 150. Let's add more two groups. More two groups, it will be 30, 
two. And once we add more two groups, it means we are now coming to eight groups of 17. So we shall also add this and we see how many groups do we have. Two plus two, this is four. Zero plus three, that is three. One plus nothing, that's one. These are eight groups. When you look at the number here and the number we are having, it is almost close. So if we add the two groups here, we shall go beyond 150. Let's try to add one more group and see what is supposed to be there. And more one group, it will be 17. And when we add more one group, remember we have eight groups already. So when we add more one group on eight, we are now going to make nine groups. Right? When we make nine groups, let's add and we see what are we going to get. Four plus seven, it will give us 11. 11, we shall write one, we regroup one. One plus three, four. Four plus one, five. One plus this, it gives us one. So when you look at this, we have 151. But our number is stopping at 150. We are not allowed to write a number which is beyond. You are only allowed to write in a number which is approximately. So when we look at this number here, it is this number which is close to 150. Because 151, it is beyond. So we shall not add this ninth group. We shall not add that ninth group. We shall only remain with eight groups. So those eight groups, I will come here and say, they are eight groups. After writing my eight groups, I will come here and say, eight times 17. Eight times 17. Eight times 17, it will give us 134. Remember, this is your group work. Don't write it here. This is your side work, not group work, side work. So don't write your side work where your exact or accurate work is. So after that, we have known it is 134. We shall say eight times 17, which will give us 134. Then we subtract. When we subtract, you'll realize that zero, take away four, it is impossible. We shall borrow here one, and we leave there four. We make this 10. After making that 10, we shall say 10 take away four, which is worth a six. We have remained with the four. Get the four, take away three. It will give us one. Come here. We have one take away one. It will give us zero. So what does it mean? When we look at this, we are going to introduce a decimal point here. We are going to introduce a decimal point here. If you don't introduce a decimal point, we can write it as 35. I mean, I mean we can write it as 58 whole number. Then we come for the remainder. We come for the remainder. Remainder becomes a numerator. Remainder becomes a numerator. So we say 58 whole number, 16 out of 17 percent. Okay? It, or else, we shall introduce a decimal point. We shall introduce a decimal point. When we introduce a decimal point, it will introduce another zero here. When it introduces a zero here, we shall have 160. 160. We shall come to our groups. We said when you add up to here, these are eight groups. Eight groups of 17 is giving you 136. Let's add more two groups and we see if we shall reach 160. I'll add more two groups, which is 30, uh, which is 34. When you look at this, it is already beyond. So we cannot add two groups. Let's add one group. More one group is 17. And when we add more one group, it means it will be nine. Okay? There will be nine groups. And nine groups, what is nine groups giving us? We shall say four plus seven, that is one. We carry or regroup one. 
When we regroup one, we shall have one plus three, that's four, plus one, that is five. Then one plus nothing or plus zero is equal to one. So what are we having? We are having nine groups. Nine groups is giving us 151. Nine groups. So we shall say point nine. Point nine. And when you come to point nine, we shall say nine times 17. Nine times 17. Which will give us 151. 151. We subtract. We shall say 0 take away 1, which will give us impossible. It is impossible. We shall have to come and borrow here. When we borrow here, we shall leave here 5. Then we make this 10. 10 take away 1, we shall have 9. 5 take away 5, 0. 1 take away 1, 0. What are we remaining with? We are remaining with 9. Since we have a decimal point, we shall just add here another 0. We shall add here another 0. When we add another 0, we shall come up with 90. So we ask ourselves, how many groups of 17 can be obtained from 90? <coughs> Excuse me. So let's look at this 17. Uh, when we look at our grouping here, this is one group, second, uh, two groups gives us 34. Then four groups gives us 68. Those are four groups. The fifth group, so we shall get four groups as 68 plus another one group. We add more one group and see what are we going to get. When you get this uh, 8 plus 7, it will give us 15. 15, we shall write 5. 1. 1 plus a, uh, 6, it will give us 7 plus 1, that is 8. So 8 of 5 is approximately 90. It is close to 90. It is too near to 90. And when we add here another 17, this number will go beyond 90, meaning that we shall stop here. And how many groups are these? Here they are for plus this one group, they are five. So we shall say they are five groups. Then I'll say five. From there, I'll say five times 17. 17, which will give us 85. Then we subtract. When we subtract, we shall have five. When we remain with the five here, we shall consider on our answer two decimal places. So I will not continue with this. Since I've got already two decimal places, I'll come finally and say, I'll come here and say, five kids or five pupils, five kids, 20 kids, 20 pupils, 20 pupils of that class is approximately, approximately, because it is not exactly, eh? it is giving you with some decimal points. So we shall say it is approximately, okay, put this sign, or you can also put it in this format, it is approximately, approximately means it is too close, very near. So it is approximately 58.9%. I've rounded off to one decimal point. And when you round off to one decimal point, it means everything here will be rounded to uh, 50. We are rounding this off. When you round everything off here to the whole number. We are rounding decimals to the whole number. So we shall have 59%. 59 it is approximately 59%. This, are the, this is the percentage of kids that got five aggregates. Then they say, 
we find the percentage of those who got five aggregates at the same time those ones who also got six aggregates. So after finding those ones who got five aggregates for 20 pupils, then we shall say those ones who got uh, 14 pupils who got 16 uh, who got six aggregates will be 14 pupils is equal to or will be also approximately will be approximately. What is the original percentage? 100. Get 100 percent minus 59 percent. Why are we subtracting 59 percent? The original percentage for all 34 kids or pupils, it was a 100. But out of 34 pupils, 20 pupils have taken 39 percent. They have taken approximately 39%. So, 14 pupils will also take approximately 100, take away 59. What we are going to get here is what these 14 pupils will take. And the answer must be in a percentage. Don't forget units. So, we shall say 0, take away 9. It will be impossible. Impossible, I will come and borrow this one. I leave here zero. Then I make this 10. After making this 10, I will also borrow one. I leave here nine. I make this 10. After making that 10, I will say 10 take away nine, which will give us 10 take away nine. It will give us one, right? Then when you get nine, take away five. It will also give us four. So it will approximately, 14 pupils will approximately score 41%. Or 14, those ones who scored the six aggregates are approximately 41%. Those who scored five aggregates are approximately 59. For you to prove that you have passed or you have failed, get the percentage for kids who got six aggregates plus the percentage of kids who scored five aggregates. If the total number gives you 100, then the total percentage must also give you 100. The total number of kids is giving you 34. At the same time, when you add their percentage also, it is giving you 100. Therefore, that qualifies the answer to be right. Okay? Uh, with, 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 with the few remarks, according to what we have gone through, for those who would wish to access this information. For those who have their own questions relating to the lessons that we have had today and any other day following the same program that is being implemented by the staff of BTN TV, please, I refer you to my soul here. Any question relating to this, don't, uh, don't dollar it. Just ask direct through WhatsApp, not direct calls, or else for more work, for more information, I refer you to these journals. Go to BTN, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and BTN TV programs. From there, you can also continue. Check at Wisdom Center website, Facebook, Parents, WhatsApp group. You'll find everything related to this. If you want exercise, activity, you want to exercise yourself relating to this lesson, please go to those journals. You'll find the activity. Do them. If possible, carry your activity. When school begins, when we go out of this crisis, get what you've done, present it to your mathematics teacher. He will guide you. He will mark you. He'll show you the right way in case you have not done it in the right way. Just be firm. Just come, you'll get their questions, everything, work out, and you'll take to your teachers for marking, and they will guide you more about this. Stay home, stay home, as the government advises us in this crisis. However, I take this initiative to appreciate 
the staff of BTN TV, which is fully sponsoring this program with the staff and the directors of Wisdom Center School. Stay blessed as you continue watching. <laughs>